One, two, three, four. There are times I wonder if I'm really alone. There are times I wonder if I'm true. There are times when I feel alone and I'm full of room. There are times I feel alone with you. You are enough, you are enough of you. And there's all it's enough for you. Sometimes I wonder if I'm real or if I'm seen. social justice advocate at, a, at the Rainbow Center in Tacoma. So getting to be in an environment where I can use my pronouns is really exciting. I've only ever done that at school and one other job I had um, was at a law firm and that was cool to be comfortable with telling them my pronouns. But you know, anywhere else I've worked, I haven't, I wouldn't tell them. They would be like, what are you talking about? So. I'm a cashier at New Seasons, so I have hundreds of interactions a day, and it's definitely triggering to be misgendered repeatedly, but I'm fortunate enough to work in a place where at least 50% of my coworkers are somewhere on the queer spectrum, um, and then work outside of my paycheck. Um, I would say for the past year, all of my art has been about gender in some form or another. So it, it intersects in multiple ways and in some things I kind of can't talk about just because of possible legal things that we are going through right now. I work in music retail and it's a very male dominated world and I specifically help people with pro audio and guitars, but pro audio is where I spend most of my time. And I just have these dudes like come in and just immediately look for another man to work with and just try so hard to talk over me or pretend that I don't know anything. Like I basically, I have dudes who come in and like, or like, hey, um, you know, I need this thing for, have you heard of garage bands? And they have no idea that I have records that I've made. I've gotten people signed to labels. I have recorded entire bands. I've recorded like string sections. I have recorded drums. I've recorded instruments that are not even from America. I have multiple recordings. I own a studio. I've used gear that we don't even sell in the store. I've used things that are just like, they, they're like trying to, you know, say they know more about me and over a $50 microphone when I've used mics that are like $5,000 and I've used, you know, and like, in other words, I, I know what I'm doing. And my managers have told me that their favorite parts of watching my cells are when they hear the word, well, actually. So yeah, basically I'm a girl in a man's world and I continue to overcome those interactions and I win people over very fast because I'm not a jerk and I don't want anybody to have a bad experience. Ultimately, I want people to get the tools that they need and I want to enable them to have those things and I just really like helping people and it I've also had like other guys who've been there like guys with like who've been there for years like you know a customer comes up and they're like hey you know like we're just 
we just want to know about this thing. And they're like, well, you should go back and talk to her like you were in the beginning. She knows more than anybody in the store about that stuff. Definitely. Um, so when I was in Texas, um, I wasn't out at all. And I worked at the same place that I went to school and I had an inter internship through um, my school as well. And I had started hormones in January and I was still living there until May and I didn't come out at all. So I think in that way, um, it kept me from having real relationships with anyone I worked with, anyone I was in school with, because nobody knew me really, I felt like. And so coming up here and being able to work in a place that's supportive and um, I just have made really close relationships really quickly because I feel like I'm so able to be myself. Yeah. Uh, my gender kind of intersects with my work. I'm a chef, so I feel like that's generally a really like, male-dominated field. Um, before I came out, it was miserable trying to be a chef. <laughs> you know, you don't get respected like at all in the kitchen, and even now I don't because I'm. Uh, kind of like small dude, you know, uh, and I'm not very growy either, which I feel like that's a big thing in the kitchen, so I'm not out ever at work. It's totally not safe to be out as a queer person in the kitchen, like, with the way that, I guess, like, a lot of cis guys talk in the kitchen, you know what I mean? And so I usually just don't say anything, but, um, I guess sometimes it's come up and I have, have like, quit my job because of it, so... I guess it kind of intersects because it's easier for me to get the job, which really sucks to like figure that out. That's like a huge privilege, I guess, with like passing, you know, since like I'm this far on my transition. I definitely get jobs in the kitchen more easily than I used to, and which I guess is nice for me, but also shitty that that happens. At work, I, I have made it known that I identify as more than just she, her. But um, there's also some other people there that are transgender um, or like are still like transitioning or are like, yeah, there's so many different gender identities like in my work. Like I said, it's just so chill. So <laughs> it's fine. My gender definitely intersects with my work. I used to work at a bakery in Pike Place Market for about two years. And I've definitely been in some situations with customers where people have like come up and said things that were a little out of place. You know, it's a big tourist spot. There's a lot of people from all over the world there. And not all of them have this understanding of what it is to be queer. I have this hat from um, a brand called Proud Animals and it says boy up here and then girl on underneath my bill. And this lady comes up and I was wearing that hat. All I had on was like simple eyeliner. Nothing else was on my face. And she just looks at me and she goes, why, why are you wearing eyeliner? And I was just like, well, why wouldn't I be? She's like, well, aren't you a boy? And I was like, well, I'm not a boy and I'm not really a girl. And you know, really, I, I, I understand what you're saying, but I don't think that gender and sexuality have anything to do with how I physically present myself. Like I feel like makeup, is just a form of self-expression and not like equated to my gender or my identity at all. And she kind of like was taken aback and she like stepped back and really thought about what I just said, which was really nice. And she was like, you know, I'm really sorry for misgendering you and really took responsibility and like took a moment for me to like educate her because some people would get pissed and like fly off the handle at somebody. But I really wanted to take that time to be like, hey, like this is how you can actually look at it. Uh, so it's, it's really great to like work for uh, a company that's so heavily involved in the LGBTQ world. We like we have these shirts or a pie company. Oh, we have these shirts that say "Pie Curious," and I think they're so cute. Mm -hmm. They're like the best. We have all these little funny puns. We have another one that says "Debt Pie Dough," and I love it. It's a really special place. I love it a lot. So yeah. <laughs> I live in Portland, so when I started working. At my job, I the first piece of paper that they have you fill out is, you know, it's like, what, um, are you male, female, or you decline to answer. So when, when most jobs, when you get that sheet of paper, most people that are, don't, you know, fall under that, they either pick, they don't decline to answer or whatever. And when I got that sheet of paper, it actually had male, female, transgender, gender, queer, 
and other, and I declined to answer. So from that moment that I started working at a place and I got to check a box out of five instead of three, and I got to check the transgender box, was really, I knew that I was in a really good situation. Um, and I'm very privileged in that aspect that I work for a company that like validates and sees and hears um, and knows that, you know, there's people that are trans, that like we exist, there's like gender non-conforming people that exist. And all of my coworkers have been really, really awesome with my transition. Um, I worked a couple nights ago and my voice was cracking and, you know, they, they laughed and, and they're like, well, puberty's a bitch. And I'm like, yeah, it kind of is. Also, bitch is really problematic, but okay. I'm very, very lucky that I can feel safe at work and I don't have to worry about my coworkers being shitty. So that's really, you know, something that I feel really lucky about. <clears throat> yeah, so, I mean, my gender and my work are inextricably linked. Um, part of what my job job is, um, is actually doing, working with organizations or individuals on becoming more trans competent, more trans aware. Um, behind the scenes, I call that dismantling transphobia. Um, but that's like a lot of words that people don't understand what they are. So usually I just refer to it as like a trans 101 training. Um, so yeah, I mean, being able to have the personal experience of being trans helps. Um, and I think being able to have had so much privilege in my life means that I'm, I am very well suited to handle immense amounts of stupid shit that people say uh, because I have a healthy, safe home to go to at night. I have a good, strong relationship with my parents. My job doesn't depend on me putting up with all of their bullshit. I am, uh, have a very safe life. And as a result, it does not hurt me in the least when someone says something stupid while I'm in front of a room. I can sort of take the, that um, and explain to them why it's inappropriate for them to ask that question. Um, so that hopefully when they are in a position of power and they are dealing with someone who has not had all the privileges I have, they've already done their learning with me, um, and then they're not gonna subject that next person to that kind of uh, um, ignorance, I'll say, very kindly. Um, so that's a big thing. And then in my professional life, I mean, like, I have always seen being trans as an asset. I'm not gonna hide who I am, um, and I feel like it makes me different. And a lot of organizations, a lot of people are interested in inviting in diverse voices to their organizations so that they're always hearing different perspectives. Um, I actually always pitched, pitched it as an asset, an asset no matter what. Like when I was in the dating world, I was like, guess what? I'm like totally different than anyone else you ever dated. Here's why. And I work a lot, I do a lot of work with LGBT prisoners. Um, I have worked within prison facilities training on trans issues for prison staff. Um, and then I also work to do one-on-one -on -one advocacy and education with um, case managers, social workers, clinical staff, psychiatrists, psychologists in facilities. Um, and I feel like, again, I can be a little bit of that conduit. Um, I'm not in the crisis situation that most trans people who are incarcerated are in, um, but I still have enough empathy and access to their experience in my own tiny way to be able to be a voice for reason. Uh, with the facility to make it seem like it's just a logical conclusion that they treat this person with dignity and give them the health care that they deserve. Um, so, yeah, so they, they intersect, and I try to make it happen in a good way. Two, three, four. There are times I wonder if I'm really alone. There are times I wonder if I'm true. 